Hi, I'm Michael. This is Lessons from the Screenplay. Sequels are hard. And in making both Aliens and Terminator 2 Judgment Day, writer-director James Cameron was tasked with creating sequels to two thrilling, beloved, blockbuster hits. On Terminator 2, Cameron knew he didn't want to make something too similar to his film The Terminator, saying, The real thrill was being able to control a response that was totally opposite from what we got the first time, and to just have fun with that, to play against expectations. You've got to do that, especially in a sequel. But with Aliens, Cameron also realized that he couldn't make something so different from Ridley Scott's original that the audience would be disappointed. You've got to play to expectation, and you've got to play it against expectation. It's about answering a question they didn't know to ask, but when they see it, it seems obvious. To make a successful sequel, the filmmaker has to walk the line between too similar and too different. So today I want to discuss how a sequel can feel both familiar and new by borrowing the premise of a first film, but applying a new designing principle. To explore how ramping up the nature and scale of the antagonist can increase the stakes of the sequel and provide new challenges for the heroes. And to examine how a protagonist can evolve from one film to the next. Let's take a look at Aliens and Terminator 2 Judgment Day. In his book, The Anatomy of Story, John Truby defines premise as your story stated in one sentence. It is the simplest combination of character and plot. He defines designing principle as the overall strategy for how you will tell your story. Essentially, the premise describes what the story is about, the designing principle describes how it will be told. One of the techniques Cameron used in crafting these sequels was to borrow the premise from the original, but apply a different designing principle. You could describe the basic premise for both The Terminator and Terminator 2 as, aided by a time-traveling protector, ordinary humans must escape from a deadly machine sent back in time to kill them. These are the key ingredients of a Terminator film. But despite these similarities, each film is distinct largely because of its designing principle. The Terminator focuses on the relationship that develops between Sarah Connor and Kyle Reese, the human sent back in time to protect her, it takes this premise and makes it a love story. With Terminator 2, Cameron took a different approach. When we first meet 10-year-old John Connor in Terminator 2, we learn he's been living with different foster families, that his mother Sarah is in a mental health facility, and that he has no father. But after the T-800, the villain from the original film, steps in to save John's life and help Sarah escape from the hospital, Sarah starts to realize that this machine is becoming a father figure to John. And the strange thing is that within her worldview and her logic, he's a father figure that makes sense. The Terminator would never stop. It would never leave him. And it would never hurt him. It would always be there. And it would die to protect him. To me, that was always the, the interesting thing about this film is that they actually form a family. Terminator 2 takes the same premise and makes it about the creation of a family. Alien and Aliens share a fairly similar premise as well. A group of people trapped in a confined space with a dangerous alien creature must fight for their survival. Alien takes this premise and methodically builds suspense that periodically explodes with surprise. <laughs> It has an ensemble cast of ordinary people who are unequipped to handle the situation and who are eliminated one by one until a lone survivor remains to face the monster. In other words, Alien develops its premise into a horror movie. But in Aliens, the story focuses on a single protagonist surrounded by space marines who are specially trained and anxious to kill whatever they can. Watch out, guys! Come on, get out, get out, get out! The climax isn't a desperate, vulnerable, narrowly successful attempt at survival. It's a showdown between the aliens and a heavily armed Ripley. Aliens takes the premise and makes it into an action movie. By keeping the same premise but changing the designing principles of these sequels, Cameron effectively creates something familiar but new. But the designing principle isn't the only element that Cameron changed. Each sequel also raises the stakes by intensifying the antagonist. 
Terminator 2 intensifies the antagonist of the first film by literally giving it an upgrade. While the T-800 is bulletproof, able to mimic voices, Honey, are you okay? I'm right here. I'm fine. And has superhuman strength, the T-1000 can turn itself into a weapon, take on the look of another person, and is virtually indestructible. By showing the unstoppable model of the Terminator from the first film struggling to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this new antagonist, we immediately understand how difficult he will be to stop. Sarah Connor and her family are in for a much harder battle this time around. Movement! What's the position? Multiple signals! They're closing! In an obvious example of how to intensify an antagonist, Aliens simply takes the terrifying creature from the first film and introduces over a hundred of them. But Cameron didn't stop there. So we needed to, to take the nemesis, the idea of the alien, and we take it to another level. So it was kind of staring us in the face. There's this ship filled with all these eggs. Who laid the eggs? So in the third act, Ripley encounters an entirely new kind of a monster. The alien queen. But this even bigger, scarier alien does more than simply provide a new obstacle for Ripley to overcome. It echoes the protagonist's character arc. Which brings us to our last topic. Both Terminator 2 and Aliens bring back the main characters from the original films and modify them in a key way. Both Sarah Connor and Ellen Ripley return with the same desire, but a different need. Returning to John Truby, Desire is what your hero wants in the story. It is a goal outside the character. In contrast, need has to do with overcoming a weakness within the character. Need lets the audience see how the hero must change to have a better life. In The Terminator, Sarah Connor starts off as what James Cameron calls an everywoman. Somebody who feels insignificant, that their life doesn't have any meaning or greater purpose, and then she gets tapped by this great duty and burden, and she has to step up. But in Terminator 2, we see how the events of the first film have completely transformed Sarah. When I called Linda and asked her if she wanted to make a second film, she basically said one thing to me, yeah, I'll do it, but I want to be crazy. She wanted to push the edge. She didn't want to just be the safe character that she was in the first film. I said, you want to be crazy? Okay, we can make you crazy. <laughs> She's not an every woman anymore. She's a badass. Unfortunately, this transformation has strained Sarah's relationship with her son, John. When John and the T-800 rescue Sarah from the hospital, her first reaction is to scold him. I always like this moment because she's oh, checking yeah. him for injuries and he thinks she's hugging him. And he's, he's still this kid, you know, that just doesn't understand, doesn't understand why his mother doesn't love him. I said it was okay. And she's angry at him for having risked himself. It was stupid of you to go there. So while Sarah's desire is the same as the first film, escape and destroy the machine that's after them, her character's need is to reconnect with John. Her journey in the film is to realize that she must not only protect him, but must also be there for him. In both Alien and Aliens, it's clear that Ripley's desire remains consistent. Destroy the alien creature she is trapped with in order to survive. But in Alien, Ripley's need isn't particularly complex. It's simply to survive. In fact, when the studio wanted to pursue a sequel to Alien, they didn't think Ripley needed to be included. But Cameron disagreed. Everybody but us thought that the film could be made without Sigourney Weaver, which completely blew my mind and was absolutely out of the question for us. As far as we were concerned, we started with Ripley from the end of the last film, and it was her story. And this time, Cameron decided to give her a backstory in order to provide her with a clearly defined need. Ripley is a mother. In one of the first scenes of the movie, which incredibly was cut from the theatrical version, Ripley wakes up after 57 years in stasis to learn that the daughter she left behind on Earth has died. I promised her that I'd be home for her birthday. Her 11th birthday. Ripley feels like she has failed her child. So when she finds the orphaned Newt, Ripley sees a second chance to be a mother. In his book, Into the Woods, John York explains, Ripley's nominal quest is to return to the planet to destroy aliens, 
but her underlying one is to prove herself a mother once again. Her external desire may not deviate, but in its pursuit, something important but unexpected is learned. By adding this layer to Ripley's character and giving her a daughter figure to protect, Aliens continues the character's journey and provides a strong reason to survive beyond survival itself. And this character journey makes the finale with the alien queen even more meaningful. It's not simply a fight for survival. It's two mothers engaging in an ultimate battle for their children. Get away from her, you bitch! When James Cameron set out to tackle these two sequels, he knew he had a challenge on his hands. But by sticking to the same premise as the original films while changing the designing principles, Cameron was able to create something that felt familiar yet original. By making each of the antagonists bigger and badder, he raised the bar for what a franchise could be. And by giving the characters similar goals but different needs, he allowed them to evolve, deepening our understanding of who they are, leaving us with two of the best sequels ever made, Aliens and Terminator 2. Judgment Day. Watching all the behind the scenes footage for these movies left me amazed at how they pulled off the visual and special effects back then, but also amazed at how far technology has come. We have so many tools at our disposal to create amazing images, as well as a super convenient way to learn how to use them. Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators, with thousands of classes in design, writing, filmmaking, and more. Premium membership gives you unlimited access, so you can join the classes and communities that are just right for you and your goals. Thinking about the painstaking stop-motion animation in the first Terminator, I became fascinated by Fraser Davidson's class on how to create a simple walk cycle in After Effects. In this class, you can learn the fundamentals of how to design a character and bring it to life, all from your personal computer. You can start the class today for free by heading to the link in the description below. An annual subscription to Skillshare is less than $10 a month, and by signing up with that link, you get two months for free. So head to Skillshare and start learning today. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the video. We have a podcast episode out today that is an in-depth discussion on aliens, and we have another episode coming out later this month on Terminator 2. So if you want to check those out, the link to our podcast, Beyond the Screenplay, is in the description below. Thank you as always to our patrons on Patreon and supporters here on YouTube for making this channel possible. If you want to support Lessons from the Screenplay on Patreon, you can by heading to the link in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.